Hey everyone, welcome to Encore, and today I'm going to be talking about airbrush guns. Hey everyone, welcome back. So an airbrush gun is probably the most important tool that you'll need if you want to do airbrush makeup. Now unlike the traditional method of applying makeup, you don't need to go through a number of brushes in order for you to complete a look. All you need is a gun in airbrush makeup. And one thing I like about airbrushing is that it's also the most sanitary way of applying makeup because the airbrush does not touch the skin at all. And again, unlike the traditional method where you use a number of brushes, the bristles touches your skin, well, either yours or your client if you're a makeup artist, and therefore the brushes are prone to bacteria buildup. And today I'm just going to go over a few things that you might want to look into if you are, you know, planning to buy an airbrush gun. And I personally own an Iwata brand airbrush. Now, Iwata is probably the biggest, if not the largest, company that manufactures um, airbrush guns and compressors and anything airbrush, okay, equipment and tools. And uh, one thing I like about their products is that they are really built pro professionally. They are engineered to the T. And a lot of professionals use this, not just makeup artists, but also, you know, painters, airbrush artist that does murals and all kinds of various other medias. Iwata is definitely their tool of choice. And one thing to look for is the size of the cup. Now the cup is what's going to hold the product. So you basically put the product in there. And one thing about airbrush makeup, especially if you're applying foundation, you only need like two drops, two small drops of foundation in order for you to cover the whole face. Okay. And the reason why I recommend looking for a large cup is because in airbrushing, it's all about the wrist movement and it, you can get pretty, you know, uncoordinated when you do that. So sometimes you would tip the airbrush like this and therefore it's going to spill if it's a smaller cup. Now the C model, this is by the way, the Iwata High Performance Plus. Okay, and this is the C model. And basically the C model is the large cup. Okay, the B model is about half the size of this cup, and this is a third of an ounce, by the way. And again, you know, the smaller cup, you tend to spill. And then, of course, the A model is basically just a hole on top of this. It doesn't even have the cup parts, just a hole. And, of course, that's the worst, especially if you're doing makeup, unless you're really, really highly trained in airbrush application. So, those are the three different kinds of cups in this kind of model and by the way I also highly recommend that you do the gravity feed uh, airbrush which is the top feed now there's also a side feed that the cup is on the side and then there's like a little tube you know that's connecting it and I kind of tend to not like those because the balance is kind of off because it's going to be heavy on one side whether this side or this side is going to be heavy so it's definitely ideal for the top feed because the balance is pretty centered. Now there's also some bottom feed ones that has the little jar on the bottom right here and then it's connected by a tube and those are ideal for like body sprays or or tanning you know spray tanning and stuff but for regular facial makeup I highly recommend the top feed gravity feed okay and um, another thing to make a note of is that there's also a needle that runs pretty much the whole length of this gun, okay? And what's going to confuse you is the size of the needles. Don't. Basically, what you want to do is at least get a size 0.30 or a 0.35 mm needle because that's going to be best for cosmetic products. Now, cosmetic products is a little bit on the thicker side, but you want a consistency of milk in order for it to go through the air gun, okay? and 
um, unlike other media that's going to be a lot more watery you know it's it's great if um, you know if you have um, narrower or like you know like a smaller gauge needle because you know it's not going to be a problem for the product to, to go through it and so I highly recommend a 0 0.30 or 0.35 mm needle when you're looking for an airbrush gun another Iwata um, airbrush they might want to check out is the Eclipse model. Now the Eclipse is probably probably the most popular um, model in makeup airbrush and uh, it's basically much like this but one thing I like about the high performance is that it basically can draw hairline so for fine lining this is best because I can totally just like do eyebrows you know and just draw hair you know it can handle that fine of a detail work with this and there's not going to be any problems and one thing to look for as well that you're probably going to be wandering is the dual action versus the single action now the single action basically you press the trigger and then the air and the product comes out okay and you don't have any control whatsoever so if you just want a light application you're not going to be able to do that unless you know you take the gun really really far you know if you want heavier application then you know it's the same thing you know you'll have to adjust now with the dual action you basically press the trigger down and that just basically dispenses the air okay which is ideal because if you want something to dry you just you know press the button you know press the trigger and it's just going to be air and it's going to basically just blow plain air so it's faster you know to dry something using just plain air now in order for you to get the product out all you need to do is press it down for the air and then pull the trigger back okay now pulling the trigger back basically dispenses the product that's in the tank or in the cup all right now another question that you guys are probably asking is like what's the difference between internal mix and external mix now most airbrush guns are internal mix and what it means is that the product and the air mixes in the gun and then therefore it blows out together into a fine micronized mist so much like uh, mimicking you know like a pixel in a picture that's basically how this works so that's why airbrush look is just probably the most flawless uh, finish in makeup and pretty much the concept is that air comes out of a hose that's attached to an, an air compressor and it goes right here okay and basically it stays in there until the trigger is pushed the mechanism right here and then that releases the pressurized air and then when the trigger is pulled back it mixes with the product about here and then they both come out of the nozzle all right so definitely another tip is make sure to get the dual okay the dual action um, airbrush okay and another thing that you need to be aware of is that um, I know this is kind of a pain but it's just something that you have to go through if you own an airbrush gun it's not an easy job to clean it there's a lot of parts to disassemble you know in order for you to clean every part and it's very important that you clean every part so that way you know your equipment will last a lot longer and definitely sanitizing it again is key because the products going to accumulate and you don't want that and uh, so that's one disadvantage about airbrush guns is that there's too many parts to deal with especially when you're doing cleanup and another thing to be aware of is that the needle is really really fragile and you want to take the utmost care in handling the needle because you don't want it to you know to bend or damage especially the tip and once it's just slightly bent it's not going to function very very well it's not going to work properly to find the best prices on Iwata airbrush guns, check out DixieArt.com. They're based out of New Orleans, Louisiana, and they have the best prices in Iwata products, including compressors and other accessories. And to learn more about Iwata airbrushes and compressors, check out the Iwata website at iwata 
www.medea.com and there's so many information, so much information there that you guys can read and learn more about airbrushing. So that's all I'm going to show you guys today and thanks for joining me. Make sure to watch the rest of my airbrush videos including you know a little bit of technical information on compressors and also the basics of doing airbrushing. Until next time I'll see you guys soon. Bye!